Verse number 13, the Bible says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So now Joseph is being warned in a dream because Herod is bent on destruction. He's bent on killing Jesus Christ. And when we see what he does in just a minute, verse number 14 says, When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And it's just amazing how many things happen. How many events that seemingly have nothing to do with one another, how would anyone know that Herod is going to try to destroy Jesus? How is anyone going to know all these different things? Well, because God knows everything. And because this is God's word, and this is one of the great things, you know, people, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but people want to find the smallest things in the Bible to tear apart to justify not having faith in God's word and completely ignore the mountain of evidence suggesting that this really is the word of God. We have scripture after scripture after scripture being fulfilled just in the birth of Christ, just in a few short, you know, this, this short period of time around his birth from verses from prophets that came hundreds and even thousands of years prior to Christ's birth, all being fulfilled in this very short period of time. That is amazing. How can you say that that is not the Word of God? And some of these, you know, they don't always, they're not all as obvious, but some of them are. The one that said, you know, from who's who's uh, coming, going forth from from everlasting, like that's pretty powerful. This isn't like Nostradamus. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Nostradamus. I haven't heard anything about his predictions in a while, but the last time I think I heard anything about Nostradamus predictions was like when the uh, trade towers were hit. Right? Someone found something to try to tie in, like, oh, Nostradamus predicted this, you know, back whenever. But if you ever looked at them, they're so lame. They're so like like they're so general. His predictions, and you could almost apply them to anything. Like they're not very specific. But when you look in the Bible, you get some very specific things. What's really interesting too is that, you know, with Nostradamus, you can apply one thing here and one thing over there, and just all over this huge span of time and try to find some leader somewhere, some famous person to try to apply what he said to. This is all being applied to one person in a very short period of time, all coming back from different writers at different periods of time, all pointing to one person and being very specific about it. That's what's amazing about God's word. This is one of the proofs that the Bible is the word of God one of my favorite proofs is, is in the book of the Kings where the Bible prophesies Josiah who was to come about 400 years in the future. So back when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, built up that altar and the man of God came and preached against him, right? And when, when Jeroboam reached forth his hand and, and he made his hand basically stiff, when he was like, get that man. And then the man of God prayed, you know, they'd be healed. The man of God said that there was going to be a man born that was going to rend the altar and, uh, and, and burn the bones of, of the priests on that altar. And he said he's going to be um, Josiah by name. He names him some 400 years before it actually happened. And, uh, you know, I was at Word of Truth Baptist Church while I was preaching a sermon, but it's like today... Okay, we're in, you know, 2019. Let's say in the 1600s, someone were to say, there's going to be a president in the United States of America, which didn't exist. Or let's just, let's just say whatever. Let's say it did exist, right? And he's going to be Donald, Donald by name. And then all of a sudden, we, you know, it's... 
And then, and he's going to do, he's going to build a wall, <laughs> whatever, right? It, that is a similar type of event that took place where he's saying Josiah's going to come. And it's not just, there's going to be a king named Josiah because someone could name their kid Josiah just to try to fit along with the story, which nobody did, by the way. None of the kings did that, intentionally tried to name their son Josiah. In fact, Josiah came along after a slew of, of some wicked kings, after Manasseh, who was king for a very long time and was not following the Lord. And um, he did exactly what was prophesied. And he wasn't even thinking about fulfilling the prophecy. He came across these, these tombs because he's just doing all this stuff, trying to get right with God. And then they're like, oh, and whose grave is this? Oh, that's the man of God that prophesied all these things that you're doing right now. Okay, well, leave those bones alone, right? So it's, it's incredible. The amount of proof there is in Scripture for the Bible being God's Word is amazing. And we get to see so many different evidences of this, yet people want to point to one thing and say, oh, well, this can't be God's Word because whatever. And we're going we're gonna to see one of those examples at the, very, at the very end of the chapter here. There's always something in Scripture that people want to turn to to not believe it, it's there. Yeah, that's right. It's there. 